good. Dario, first of all, congratulations. You're a great historian of the sport. And I think you mentioned this. Two races came to mind for me right away. The tremendous battle between Al Unser Jr. and Emerson Fittipaldi was certainly one of the contact. The other, the 1960 battle between Roger Ward and Jim Rathman that had so many passes. This was up there. His instructions. 96 win for the IndyCar team. Holy smokes. Oh, wow. Oh, that's cool. Wow. And Chip's bit. Huh. I just mentioned the 60 race, uh -huh. and so many passes in it. And then, of course, I think I heard you mention over the PA the Emerson Pitt of Paul the Ellis or Junior situation. Girl. She's been in the truck all day and every day. When my dog sees these pictures, she's going to be <laughs> She's the most patient dog. No. <laughs> Just say hello. The dog is stealing your phone. Say hello there. Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I did think of that. I thought of Emerson and Al in that fight to the finish. Um, I mean, it was a crazy race. Long <laughs> before that. Um, you know, getting spun in the first pit stop there. And. Uh, Having to fight our way from the back to the uh, to the front, that was uh, that was tough, but it also gave me a lot of confidence because I, I knew how good the target car was at that point. <laughs> um, that last yellow or the last pit stop that we came out, it was like 35 to go, and they said you need to save fuel. And I came on the radio and I said, "We've been here before, haven't we? We won in 10. We didn't get. So we needed to get an 11." Um, and so off we went, and Scott and I were fighting back and forwards in that one restart, and Takuma was in there, and then Tony came from a long way back and, and got in the lead. Yeah, where did you come from? And it was kind of like old times, the three of us back and forwards. Um, and that was the point. As hard as I was concentrating, I thought, I bet Dan is laughing his ass off right there. <laughs> us going at it. Um, but then coming down to that, that, after that last restart, we were kind of swapping back and forwards, and Rip Takuma came out and coming for the last lap and got a good run on the inside. So he, he, I moved over a bit and I saw him coming and I said, no, I'm, I'm not too late on that. So I moved. But this is well before the corner. I moved back up. We turned into the corner. I gave him a load of room and I think just with that tight line, he, he just lost the rear. Turn one was the trickiest corner all day. And uh, if you did go in there with a tight line, it tended to get a bit loose. And he, he lost the rear, I guess, and, and came around and, uh, and hit us. And I just I kept the foot and I managed to catch it. And uh, that was it. It was a hell of a hell of a finish. Hi, Dario. This race had a record for most lead changes. Of course, it's the first time here at Indy since Dan Weldon. Where does this rank for you among your races here and your victories here? Well, it's very, very difficult to choose one. They're all special to me. Um, today, I think obviously coming from the back and the crazy last laps, that's, that was the, the highlight. But the thing that really got me was the, the, the kind of the, 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 the love that the fans showed for, for Dan and, and, the, and the, the tribute that we were all able to pay him by, you know, on lap 26, lap 98, doing that. And just as soon as he came around in the car with us afterwards, just see the reaction and how much he was loved. And, and uh, that was, to me, that was, was, was a great thing to see. And, um, made me happy and um, I think him and, and uh, you know I, I, I said on TV I dedicated it to, to, to Dan and, and Michael Wanzer who we both lost with days of each other at the end of uh, of last season. <coughs> we try to work back and forth in the rooms where we try to do it here so Ed you're next and then I'd like to uh, Dario two part question. One from the time you got hit on the pit road and spun around and came back to Sada going inside from there 
it seems that you have become just about unperturbable on this racetrack. Is there a certain confidence in having done so well here in so many laps on the track? And second part, your wife, right after the race was over, mentioned the two greatest Scottish drivers ever. She said Jackie Stewart brought him up right, and Jim Clark is looking down on him. The second part, could you talk about oh sort of your place among the Scottish drivers and, and, and the, those two that you were sort of headed for that? <clears throat> yeah, I'll start with, with, with Jackie and, and Jimmy. I think my mom, I know she brought me up right, she, she definitely, you know, I misbehaved. She, <laughs> when you've met my mom, will know what I'm talking about. Um, but Jackie was, was a great person for me to, to meet at that stage in my life, and the education he gave me, and um, continues to do so. I mean, still now I phone him up, Jackie, what do I do here? And he'll, he'll give me a, uh, some advice, and you know, he has such an unusual way of thinking about things sometimes. He's got such a great brain, and um, so I'm always I'm always grateful to Jackie, um, and Jimmy Clark. I mean, he's, he's the guy, you know. Between him and Jackie, they're the guys I wanted to emulate <coughs> and to, you know, to, to to drive like. I guess I don't have their, you know, I don't have their talent. So I just I try and work hard, and uh, I'm lucky I'm with a great team. And also about the, the oh. sorry, Ed. well. I don't come in here with any expectations for the race. I work on my car during practice. You know, Scott and I work together very tightly with, with the target team, and we try and get the fastest, best car we can to go racing. And then we don't. I don't have any expectations. I just go out and and and, and do the best job I can. And, and, and I'm not really thinking, going to it, thinking, oh, I'm going to win this one or anything. So it, you've got to let the race come to you in some ways, and that's what I do. Whether I was getting spun in the pits and we didn't get back up. That's what it was going to give me today, but luckily I had the car and I was able to, to time those passes. That was the key, I think, was timing my passes. I got a good car, but I was able to, to get to time the passes coming up. And um, one of the reasons I love driving for the target team, which is, uh, it's the same thing that the, the, the Andretti guys have. They don't give up. There's no, oh, yeah. It's like, right, okay, here we go. This is a situation we find ourselves in. How are we going to get out of it? And, uh, and we did today, and you know, to finish one two with with, with Scott and have TK third. Um, that's that was the uh, that was a cool result. Dario, you take us through that moment once again when the came up inside you. What were you thinking? What were you hearing on the radio? Well, I heard my sponsor say he's got to run and he's coming up. Okay, start to look inside, and I was moving over, and then I I look in the mirror and I see exactly where it was, and I started moving back. Um, you know, we're allowed to, we're allowed to, uh, what did they say? You're allowed to move over to the wall and leave the car behind an inch, a car width and an inch. And I wanted to make sure I left more than that. Um, and then my plan from that point was to, I think, I was kind of letting the car go, okay, a deep gulp, because I had to go, I knew I'd have to go around the outside of one, wide open, up towards the grade, to stand a chance of winning. And, Takuma, I guess, he, he lost the rear. I watched the replay on the, on the, on the TV there, and he lost the rear on the way in. And I felt the, the hit, and the car got sideways, but I, I kept my foot in, and, uh, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, about that move, Dario, were you surprised to see Takuma come there based on, like Scott was saying, he thought he should have waited uh, until maybe the, you know. Well, Taku's very aggressive. And uh, he thought, I think he thought that was his chance. <coughs> I mean, well, you know, why not? He, uh, he, I think he did, he did uh, everything right up until he lost the rear into the car. You know what I mean? That was that was the problem. He, had, I guess, the car was too too oversteering, and he lost the rear. And up until that point, I thought he'd, he'd made a good move. I wasn't very happy about it. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. I, I didn't, I didn't touch him. I didn't squeeze him down. Um, he just lost the rear of the car. Dario, I know you don't like to kind of talk about yourself a little bit, but really you've become a master of the moment, especially since returning here in 09. I mean, how can you even begin to put in the words? You know, when there's a big moment that can happen, you seem to be the guy that delivers. I 
it's a team sport, isn't it, Bruce? It's, it's such a team sport, and I'm very aware of the fact that the team wins it, myself and all the other members of the team. You know, that includes Honda. We all want it together, and I couldn't just jump in any car here. With this group of people that I get to work with, I know how lucky I am, and I don't think it's a Thanks, thank Hi, Hi, Jenna. Two questions for you. One piggybacks off of Bruce, and I, I ask you this, you no, know, I'm out of order. Piggybacking off of Bruce, it is a team sport. What do you say to Dixon, who, you know, obviously wanted it also, and then you end up with the victory? Well, he has the second one, and only with your answer. Yes, that's, that's tough, because when it's going on, yeah, I want to beat Scott, and I know he wants to beat me. I don't think I'm a more competitive individual. With maybe the exception of Dan in the early years, who just was like, and Scott is, continues to be like that. And so we're out there, we're racing as hard as we can. And Chip and Mike are kind of, they're on their timing stands looking at each other, going, I'm going to win this one. You know, so they're, we were out there racing each other hard, and then it's all over, and I, I, he comes up in, in victory lane, and I, you know, he's my buddy. Out in the track, he's a competition, but a teammate. And then afterwards he's my friend and I see the disappointment in his face and I see the disappointment in TK's face now. And uh, you know I think I think both those guys will get more championships and then he wins. They're just too good. Not to. Um, and when you beat guys like that, it, I, I take that as a big accomplishment because they're god they're not easy to beat. And my second question is one I ask you all the time and you refuse to ever answer it. But <laughs> you, um, four <laughs> You have four championships and you have three no. Indy 500s now and you've got 31 victories. There's you know, one more spot and it's just Andretti's and uncertain agent in front of you. I mean, when do you start looking at, at where you stack up in the world of open wheel racing? Maybe when I retire. I think then. Um, oh. I don't know. I, uh, I'm very proud of, and I've said this before, I'm very proud of the achievements that you know, the Indy wins, the championships, every one of the race wins. Um, you know, and I, sometimes I look back, but generally I'm kind of looking forward. Because when I retire, that will be the time to kind of look back and you know, and hang out with uh, with my friends here and hang over the fence and shout abuse at Dixie and, and Will and Tony <laughs> and all the guys that are still racing. Um, today, I was lucky enough to to be in the, in the green room and, and TK and I were sitting together finding quite a corner and then Pernelli came up, Bobby Unser came up, Johnny Rutherford came up and we're like, you know, this is cool. This is, this is, and we, TK and I were getting our pictures taken with like a couple of kids, you know, like, hey, with these legends of the sport, and, uh, um, yeah, the time to, I guess the time to look back is when I'm retired. Congratulations, first of all. A uh, couple questions. One, <coughs> when you had Susie get in the car and ride with you, was that just a completely spontaneous situation that she was there and you said, come on and be a part of this? And I'll ask you the Okay, well, Suze came over um, to, to, to say well done. And uh, got to have a wee chat. And uh, I tell you what, she's a stronger person than I am to come here. You know, I know, and she knows better than anybody how much Dan loved Indy and how much Indy loved Dan. But to be here, to go through all those emotions, and so when we saw it, Ashley and I were saying it, it would be cool to, to for Suze to come because last year, my favourite memory of. of of the race last year was Dan was going out in his parade lap afterwards and I had this crazy notion in my head that I was going to carjack him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing in my pit lane and I'm disappointed but at the same time I'm happy for my, my, my friend. And I see him coming towards me and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is going to be good. And I see his face and he is just sobbing. It means so much to him. Everything that had happened to him, you know, it, not having a regular drive, all the stuff with his mum, with, with, with his Alzheimer's. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't do 
said. And I just gave him a big hug and told him how proud I was.